is happening. Welcome back to The Past Alive. Thank you all for tuning in tonight for the return of the weekend recap, the series where I showcase my flea market and antique mall finds. And this weekend, I mostly stayed local. I didn't really go too far away. I stopped off at a few places yesterday. And then this morning, I made my way up into the mountains in Duncansville, and Altoona area, about an hour and some change away from my house. But I brought back baseball cards, wax. Got a bunch to share with you. So let's get right down to it. Yesterday, a more local find... I stopped by a place about I don't know, 25 minutes up the road from me, a place that I frequent pretty often. They always have cards there. And I came across this Beat 95 Tops traded box. And for some reason, you just never really see these in the wild. I feel like the production numbers come 95 were much lower, obviously, than the Junk Wax era. But I just never see these in the wild. And the 95 traded, I opened a box of these. I don't even remember. It was a while, a while ago, a couple years back. It was a personal rip. And I almost was able to put together two complete sets with the boxes I opened, so I knew that these were ripped open going into the buying this box. It was three bucks. I'm like, you know what? I almost completed two sets from one box. I'll buy this, take a chance. Maybe I'll be able to put together at least one more set for $3. And you have Nomo Rookie Card on top, which was a hot one back in the day. So it looks like it wasn't picked over. I kind of thumbed through it a little bit. I can't find my partial 95 traded sets to even <laughs> figure out what cards I need somewhere. So that's a work in progress, but... There might be a Mariano Rivera first tops card in there. I have not looked through all those yet, but once I dig that out, I'm going to see if I can complete one, if not both of those 95 trading sets that I have. So that's pretty sick. $3. You can't pass on something like that. I grabbed this today. 15 bucks. I feel like I really can't pass on that $15. It's not too far off from the eBay price, but after you pay the shipping and taxes and stuff like that, you're probably going to pay $30 plus for a 91 Tops wax box. I didn't have one of these in my collection. I think I might have had like a cello box from 91, but not an actual wax. So I figured I would pick this up. I'll probably keep it sealed. This was an online purchase. I bought a few things over the last week, and for whatever reason, I have not received them yet. I managed to get to one thing that came in. I was pretty stoked on this. It is an Ames sweatshirt it's like a beige color 40th anniversary of ames in 1998 which is actually i think the year after they bought out my beloved hills department store ames the now defunct retailer they remember, remember buying cards back in the day from there 92 tops i think were like 49 cents i picked up some singles also from a few different dealers let's go through these i grabbed this yesterday i figured you could not go wrong buying a second year larry bird a pretty freaking nice condition too if you look at those edges and corners this super action larry bird for five bucks like i'll grab that i don't know if i'll ever own a larry bird rookie card but i will have a second year at the very least so for five bucks i thought it was a pretty good deal and i grabbed this today i know a lot of us love the pro vision set and the white border ones i just never really see them these were only available in the factory sets if you had to buy a whole school bus of baseball cards in a factory set to even obtain these. Probably the only good thing that came out of 91 Fleer were the Pro Visions cards. A four card set, you got Bonds leading things off. Henderson, card number two. Sandberg looking super pissed off. And Dave Stewart, who always looked pissed off. But these cards were so cool. And they also had the Black Border ones in 91 also. But just very, very awesome cards in general. But I figured for three bucks... I was going to pick those up because I've kind of been thinking about collecting these lately. They're not very expensive at all, and they're super cool. And I think this one was maybe about around a dollar. I, I wasn't sure if I had it or not, but I just remember back in 95, this Emotion Hideo Nomo insert was like pretty crazy in price and value and just people wanted it bad. And I never had it. I'm pretty sure my brother had this at one point, and I was super jealous. But 95 Emotion Hideo Nomo. And then I picked this up for a dollar eighty nine pirate schedule. I feel like I remember having this as a kid, and I thought that was pretty sick. It's in a card saver, those old school pop cans on there, and uh, I'll just I'll hang on to that. Sid Bream and Jim Gotts right there along with Bobby Bo. Very very cool stuff. And here's one I don't even know if I realized that this was a thing. CC Sabathia may or may not make his way to the Hall of Fame eventually. This is a buck, but his ninety nine tops finest rookie card. I was like, that's pretty sick. It's not very often I come across rookies, especially from the 90s, that I don't have or need. So I figured CC Sabathia, he's a guy that doesn't have too many rookies. I will pick up his top's finest for $1. Couldn't pass on that. The same for this Tim Duncan rookie. 
from 9798 Metal. This is a pretty awesome one. Love these metal cards. I feel like I speak for all of us when I say that. They're so cool. But a Tim Duncan rookie card for the multi-sport rookie box. I figured I had to pick that one up. Pretty nice one there. And this last one, I, I was kind of kicking it around if I wanted to get it or not. But I, uh, I gave in. Rookie sensations were so awesome when they came out. People still go wild over these all these years later. You had to buy a 92 Fleer Jumbo Box to get them. Something that is surprisingly, for the Junk Wax era, 92 Fleer Jumbo Boxes, look them up on eBay. They're like 100 bucks. That's what they sell for actively. They're around $100. And that's how you could pull the Rookie Sensations. And the Frank Thomas, one of the best cards in the set, if not the best card in the set. I was like, that's pretty sick. For um, but Back in 92, this was a very, very hot card to have. And it's not one I really see too often in the wild. So not typically something I really collect, but... Again, for nostalgia, I just had to grab it. I thought that was super cool. Rookie Sensations. The Big Hurt. I grabbed a random bag of wax. And also a case from a place about an hour away. Now, obviously, you could probably guess what caught my eye on this bag of packs. The 90 Tops Jumbo Pack there. Got 90 Upper Deck Cello Pack from 88 Tops. 90 Fleer which is going to be my next talking point. Before we savagely swashbuckle one of these packs looking for the No Name on Front and others, I want to share with you the next buy that I picked up in the same place. And that's this 90 Fleer rack case I bought today. I was kind of torn on picking this up, but I gave in. I had to have it. It's a three-box rack case. It is still sealed. We still have the original factory seal on there. It was $85 for this rack case. I know you're thinking for 90 Fleer, that seems like a good bit of money to pay, but you have the five-digit number on here. This is the number that you need to be able to see and identify in order to know if you have an error case for 89 Fleer. Also, for 90 Fleer, the first number signifies the year, so that means these were produced in 1989. The next three are the day of the year. So, 365 days in a year, this was produced on day 348. I think the last number is like the shift number, but Made in 1989 for 1990, I believe that we can find ourselves a Dave Martinez error card in here. Then as you see on the bottom, it's labeled Error Box 1990. Now, you can't always go by that, but like I said, the five-digit digit code on the side, it kind of makes me believe that we may be able to find a Dave Martinez error card. And we're going to rip into this case on Tuesday for Needle in a Wax Stack. So, three-box rack case of 1990 Fleer. Get super excited. We're going to pull all kinds of Jose Rebays. And also for ripping into some older packs. It's always a good way to end the weekend recap. To rip some old wax. It's not something I really do as much as I did at one point on here. We have two packs, 88 Fleer. The 88 Cello Pack, 90 Fleer. 90 Upper Deck, which a guy in the Facebook group, Vincent, said he bought a few boxes of these from the same place I bought these packs. And he pulled the Reggie Auto, which is absolutely freaking nuts. So congrats to him on that. 90 Tops Jumbo. 88 Donruss in 1990 Donruss. We'll save 90 Tops Jumbo for last. I figure that since I put the kibosh on 90 Tops every month, we got to at least open some to keep the memory alive. Those wax wrappers always rip to shreds. You got part of Yaz's chin there. Tom Hankey starts things off. Let's see if we can find... Any of the best rookies in here and or the reverse negative. Carlton Fisk, MVP. Eddie Murray is going to end that pack and all kinds of schmutz stuck to him. I'll do a 90 upper deck next. See if we can find ourselves the Ben McDonald error card, which I don't know if I still have. Kind of like misplaced all of my error cards. I was going to make a video on them and <laughs> I can't find those either. There's a hawk, as Corey calls him. Jeffrey Leonard. Matt Winters, but I think you also find some prominent rookies in here like Sosa, etc. Greg Maddox, the tiny little hologram sticker for the Oakland A's. Got Scott Scudder rookie card, not the short print from 90 Tops. Mark Grace, got Sweet to Lou Whitaker, Porter card, Ron James, Lance McCullers, and Frank Viola. That respectable stash. 88 to Don Russ's next. Let's see, we got the usual puzzle piece, part of his Tootsies. Bob Kipper looking higher than ever. Benito Santiago. 
Let's see if we can find a Roberto Alomar rookie or Tom Galavin, probably the two best ones. Tom Brookins instead shows up. Mike Pagliarulo. Nothing notable in there. Naughty Fleer, get ready, because we are going to be <laughs> ripping into three rack, uh, three rack boxes of these. And I'm not super excited about it, but it would be sick to uh, actually pull the Dave Martinez error card, because it is a tough pull, and it's a, it's a valuable card, obviously. Milwaukee Brewer sticker that's horribly miscut. I'm kind of obsessed with that, as you can imagine. Charlie Huff, older than time itself. Cal Ripken, actually, this is an error card. Speaking of errors, his last name is spelled wrong. K I N. Obviously not the way we spell Ripken in this case, but that is an error. So it's not really one. I'd, I don't know if I'd really collect that one or not, but it'd be crazy if we pulled the uh, the freaking Dave Martinez in this pack. But even better, we pulled the Ted Power multiple offenses. You have a Budweiser billboard in the background and also Winston. For some reason, I thought that Winston sign was more apparent and that freaking Cardinals logo was not blocking it, but pretty awesome one there. Jerome Baroa. Scott Fletcher, Tony Gwynn, there's a Deion Sanders. I don't consider that a rookie card. It's definitely not a rookie card. His rookie is an 89 Fleer update and Lou Whitaker. Once again, we've got two packs of 88 Fleer now to find Edgar Martinez rookie and or Mark Grace or Tom Glavin and maybe even Matt Williams. Baltimore Orioles sticker starts it off. Matt Williams rookie card shows up. Very nice. Good one there. Mark Davis. And what else will we unearth? Paul Kilgis had some interesting photos. Steve Bedrosian. Matt Williams rookie shows up in that pack. The best rookie pull so far from this random rip. We got an insert card coming up in here. Cecil Fuehler. It's going to be an Andre Dawson. And the Hawk once again. Danny Gladden at Scraggly Mullet flapping in the wind. And also Roberto Kelly rookie back in 88. Ladies, that was a pretty freaking hot card, but the Hawk Dawson shows up. Melito Perez for Jonathan H. Ellis Burks, rookie. This would have been a crazy pack back then. Roberto Kelly and Ellis Burks. And it doesn't look like my Mark Grace is going to show up. Randy Velarde instead. Al Padrique, rookie for Paul L. If he watches this, I'm sure he's going to be pumped about that. And Gary Rita sends that pack. 88 tops. Cello is going to be the second to last pack in this weekend recap rip. Look at the Keith Comstock air or even the McGuire and or Eddie Murray error. A bunch of errors in this set. There is Tat Paddler is going to show up. Keith Comstock does show up. And that is not the error card. Vaughn Hayes, my arch nemesis. Benito Santiago, Juan Samuel, all-star card. Eric Plunk, another one of my arch, enemies, arch enemies from my youth. There's the big cat as Corey insists on calling him. The propaganda piece featuring Jack Clark. Very down in the dumps on that photo. Gene Larkin also sharing that sentiment. Bill Gullickson having the time of his life. Keith, Keith Hernandez. <laughs> what is going on with his puffed out cheeks there? Dipping hard in that photo. R.J. Reynolds. There's a checklist card. Jimmy Jones. And Phil Lombardi is going to end that pack. Leading us to the last order of business. The big fat Bobus 90 Tops Jumbo. Can I find the no name on front? After all of these years, would come out of this pack. That would be absolutely nuts. Todd Zeal, rookie. Give me luck. Because back in 1990, I've been flipping out over that card. And in 2024, I'm flipping out over the Mickey Weston. Trying to summon head, summon the three-headed Weston here. Mickey Weston, rookie. Short print, Eric Plunk. Lenny Harris, Gary Gaetti, looking rather sadistic in that photo. There's Hernandez again. Charlie Huff. Can we find a Frank Thomas rookie even? Settle for that. There is the Civil War era Mitch Williams. I will most definitely settle for that one. Seeing a lot of repeat names here. <laughs> a lot of Dawsons too. Joe Girardi, a second year card. If anyone is concerned about that. Puckett, that should lead us to the very commendable unibrow of none other than Stan Javier. Coming in very, very thick there. Vaughn Hayes, once again, two packs in a row. You know how I feel about that. Ernie Witt scratching his back. And the debut magazine from Tops featuring Jose Canseco is going to end that freaking rip with no no name on front. But we are all very, very used to that, are we not? So that's it for the weekend recap. I hope that you enjoyed it. I would really love to know what your favorite card that you saw was. What tickled your fancy most? Please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. 
And I will see you guys all back tomorrow night for the Mailbag Monday. Got a couple packages to open up. And Tuesday, the 90 Fleer Error Case Rip. Have a great rest of the weekend, guys. I'll see you all back tomorrow night.